Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special Fight in Focus. I'm Josh Chernoff, and I am joined. I've got this great roundtable here, of course. Rob Bidos is back joining us here. We have Shane Narbonne. We, of course, have Benny Carlson and Kristen Banks. Thank you all so much for being here. We are here, of course, to talk all about Battle of the Baggers Round 1 in Utah, uh, which, of course, is coming to you live May 14th, 3 p.m. Eastern time right here on Fight. Uh, Rob, how's it going? It's going great. Thanks a lot for having us on, Josh. I know you've been uh, swamped bringing everybody all the action that goes on in the traditional fight family. But uh, I got our family out here today. We have our uh, national champ in the uh, Bagger GP class, Shane Narbone. And I know you guys like the combat kind of thing. How about this for a nickname? Insane Shane Narbone right up there. There you go. Then we got the winningest BRL racer, Benny Carlson. The guy lines up. He comes home with the belt. And we do belts, very similar to some of the combat sports you guys work with. And he's loaded up with belts. The uh, He's the belt champion. And, of course, Kristen Banks, not only our pit reporter, longtime family motorcycle industry personality, has massive passion for everything competition. And when we were able to link up with her here on a fight program, when we did uh, Moto Car Fight Club, she mm-hmm. was a natural fit. She's an Indian rider, so, you know, she's part of the club already. <laughs> well, yeah, and I remember, if I remember correctly, Kristen, you had started riding when you were like three years old or something, something like really early like that, right? I think it was two and a half. Two and a half, okay. <laughs> On an Indian with training wheels, though. Wow, all right then. Um, so yeah, we obviously, there you go. The panel kind of speaks for itself here. Um, but of course we have this huge event coming up. Uh, it is so great to have bagger racing back, uh, on fight live. So tell us a little bit about, you know, we said this is battle of the baggers round one, Utah. So Rob, if you can kind of take us through and I'm almost going to, uh, ask you to maybe pitch some questions out to the group here, um, about this, just so we're touching base on everything to make sure that our fans know all of the excitement, because as you mentioned, this is not the traditional combat sports that maybe you're used to seeing on fight, but man, is it competitive and it's a sport. So as far as I'm concerned, it's just a different kind of combat sports right here. So tell us a little bit about what this uh, round one is and, and what we're leading to and just give us the whole, the whole uh, cell here. Well, obviously motorsports are a huge part of the world. The whole uh, global, uh, Community loves rallies behind it from uh, F1 and, and MotoGP and uh, World Motocross. And of course, in America, we have a huge appetite for racing as well. And um, we're able to bring American V twin motorcycles. Now, that's semi unique in itself. It's been done, but then we've created a whole entire series around it where all the support classes are American V twin bikes. We have Sportsters, Dinas, Soft Tails. You know, a lot of guys and gals have those in their garage. Obviously, a lot of classes for baggers, a brand new class for all the liquid cooled Indian and Harleys out there, the FS Cup. And uh, it's something that if you have really been passionate, the Sturgis kind of uh, party you like, the custom bike show environment you enjoy, the camaraderie of it, come on out. This is for you. And all these aftermarket companies that are building these bikes. You're going to see if the pro the products they produce are a benefit in weight savings. Do they make it perform better? Do they make it handle better? And when you see what uh, some of these companies have created, I think you're going to be blown away. Now, Shane, when was how long have you been doing this? Uh, I mean, I've been racing since I was seven years old, so twenty five plus years. Now, from flat track. At what point? Right? At what point in time? Well, that's what I'm curious about is when you. Part of what makes this so unique is the type of bike that you're riding here. Um, and we'll have some pictures up here that are kind of that are showing. And I apologize that I'm not the most well versed. I just enjoy watching them and looking at them. But uh, how difficult is it to when you've trained uh, on a certain type of machine and then to shift to something else? Is it you know, this isn't the same again. We joked about you know, the difference in combat sports or whatever, but you know, you'll have a fighter who it's different for them to change from a certain ounce glove to a, to a different glove. Um, but I feel like this has got to be such a different, you know, I know if I'm taking my car, my wife's car, there's a difference in the feel. So how do you, when you're doing something like this, uh, how long have you been doing these types of bikes and, and what's the difference really? 
Oh, I mean, we first started last year with Trask, actually at this Utah round. Um, but really the difference, I mean, it's a motorcycle, you know, it has two wheels and suspension. So uh, in the end, really, it's it's kind of, uh, it's almost an experience and uh, you can't really explain it. It's just a 650 pound motorcycle that you're trying to uh, get around fast corners and uh, stop it really. Um, but really in the end it's it's a motorcycle and uh with the suspension packages they have nowadays it's it's actually quite unbelievable how good it handles um oh. so it's actually good benny do you kind of feel the same way with that that at the end of the day hey it's just motorcycle i can it doesn't matter which one i can hop on or for you is there like uh do you have a preferred one where you say okay this is a little more challenging to to ride um, yeah, we have one. Our Dyna is, is, is hard to ride, which is our kind of more of our, um, it'd be more of our just regular street bike that the vast majority of people are riding. Um, as far as my bagger, um, and the new Pan Am that we built, I think that those are going to be, you know, just like any other motorcycle. So, uh, I'm excited. We got one new bike that we'll be coming out with in Salt Lake for the first round for the FX Cup, which will be the Harley Davidson Pan Am. And, and with that, you know, again, we're in uncharted territory. A lot of the motorcycles that Shane and myself are riding, they're under a year as far as uh, testing and development. So basically what I'm riding is the bike that I ride to work and I ride with my wife on the back day in and day out, weekend and week out. Um, and now all of a sudden, uncharted territory, we're taking almost that same exact motorcycle and we're going to go and try and race. And me and Shane are going to battle it at Salt Lake City, and, I, and I'm looking forward to the challenge. So so what you're saying, I mean, these are bikes that you're familiar with, but again, such a short amount of time that this is something you've been able to race with. Um, so, But there really was no uh, challenge in saying, okay, now we're taking... Because I, I would imagine if all of a sudden, you know, if you're NASCAR and all of a sudden somebody says, hey, here's a minivan, can you use this? You know, like, there's going to be a bit of a, a, a challenge yeah, and a change. Um, but... So, Kristen, I wanted to ask you, you know, as kind of a spectator here who, who, of course, is very well versed in all of this. Have you ever ridden any of these types of bikes? No, I have not. I have an Indian Scout that I've ridden on country back roads, but I have no experience racing a bagger. And honestly, if, you know, Shane or Benny let me take theirs around the track before the race on Saturday, then I would gladly do it and come back and tell you how it was. But I don't think that's happening. So I'll just uh, stick to watching them. But yeah, it's crazy what they're doing and how heavy these bikes are and how fast they're going and the tight turns they're turning. It's wild. It's really cool to watch, though. And I'm glad that you said that because from watching it, to me, it looks, you know, these guys, they're professionals. They're over here, you know, a ah, bike's a bike, you know, I can do whatever. Um, but I, so somebody like me, I look at it and I go, wow, this is incredible that you're able to hop from one bike to a completely different one. Uh, so Rob, what can we expect with, with this? Um, what can somebody who maybe isn't familiar with bagger racing, um, but is familiar with other types of racing, what, what is the difference here? What really is the, the draw to this type of motorcycle? Oh, the Harley Davidson and Indian brand, especially the classification of bagger, you're going to, you know, it's coined as. Um, they're the biggest segment of motorcycling. They sell more of those than, than anything. But they've never really been uh, defined by a racing situation. They've been more of a bike show kind of a crowd. And people use them to attend huge rallies and for riding, which is what you should do. But what you want to see, as we mentioned again, start of the show, that aftermarket companies, there's there's hundreds of them. There, there may even be thousands of them globally that have their own ingredients they want to add to the sauce. You know, the Harley Davidson FL platform, the Indian Challenger platform, you take those bikes, which they, they could make more and sell all they can make, and they just can't keep up with the demand right now. But once sure. you have that, now you want to make it your own, you know, and these companies like Trask, they had turbochargers and and upgrade the suspension and the swing arms and things. Then you have Benny's guy. He's uh, Suburban Harley Davidson slash Sly Fox slash. He's got a new alliance with the folks from Custom Dynamics. And their bike is, um, they work within a few things in their specialty. Alex Fox makes carbon fiber products. So they're all in different segments and they all have a different type of ingredient they bring to the battle. You know, the guys from 
Saddleman make the best seats. So ergonomically, their bike works real well. You have companies like Fueling who make a great um, engine performance, a cam performance. Bassani makes exhaust. So in those areas, their bikes shine. Now, if they put the rest of the right ingredients, boy, they have quite a, uh, quite a package they go out there with and show everybody what it looks like. And then with this great platform that Fight gives us, folks from around the world, they can tune in, watch it. And these companies are all designed to sell you those seats, sell you that chain conversion in trash condition, sell you the turbocharger, sell you the upgraded brakes. So all these things, suspension components, they all make their way out to, to the end consumer pretty quickly from this experience. Yeah, and that and that's something I, I think is really interesting because I had mentioned before, you know, I joked about NASCAR or something, but you can't, you know, I can't sit here and, and, and sit and watch NASCAR and look at one of those cars and say, oh man, I'd love to take my kids to school in that. I think I'm going to buy one. Like it's not, you know, it's not the same type of thing, but here you can really, somebody who owns, you're telling me somebody that owns this same bike can be watching kind of living vicariously through you guys who are, who are out there racing with a bike that they actually have or can then go buy. You know, motorcycle uh, custom trends for most parts have always taken the bike and made it visually something really appealing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times visually it's lowering it as low as you can and, and putting all the stretch stuff, which adds weight to it and all this thing. This is making the bike stop better, perform better, corner better, the suspension is better. It's actually rather lowering it. They're giving it more. Ergonomically, they're working on making you really in a in a good position to ride the bike. It's kind of one of those odd things that's made the bike better. And the, the parts trickle down and it makes your bike that you have on the street work better. Not just look cooler, work better. Well, there's something like, Kristen, I, I believe you were the one who mentioned about how heavy these bikes are. Um, and then, Rob, you were talking about, uh, I think you mentioned some carbon material. Um, now, I would imagine that would end up making them a little bit lighter, being able to use some of that. Am I correct with that? As you take some of the things that just adorn the bike off, some of the frills and whatnot, things that, that the again, the, the Harley and Indian crowd have always liked to personalize their bike. Mm -hmm. You strip it of those, the weight comes down. Then you start substituting components like fenders and all that. They start to come down even farther. And these guys, with removal of some unnecessary things and using of, of really proper components, they're knocking a few hundred pounds off of this thing. Right. Now, uh, Shane and Benny both, how important uh, is that, those those couple hundred pounds? Or how, how much of a difference can that make for you, both in the actual ability to win a race but also in just the feel, if you hop on a bike and this one's a hundred pounds lighter than the, than maybe one that you had just been uh, training on, is that, are you going to feel that or does it have to get to maybe it's 300, 400 pounds before it At what point in time do you say, this has really changed. Now I have to maybe lean a little less or do, and I'm of course talking about this with no knowledge whatsoever of how you actually do this. But, but I'd imagine that, you know, you're controlling this differently. How important are those uh, those extra pounds? And do you necessarily want to shave off weight? Maybe do you want extra weight in some areas? We'll start with you, Shane. No. I mean, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course you want it as light as possible. Um, I mean, a regular street bike, you would say, is around 360 to 380. So... Of course, taking weight off is always good um, mm -hmm. to get the the flick and the the turns of the corners. Um, but other than that, I mean, of course, more weight is more weight taking off is is definitely better in the in the long run. So taking the more weight you remove, the yeah, the matter. more the more weight you remove from the motorcycle, of course, it's going to handle, it's going to turn, it's going to mm -hmm. flip better. Um, but you can only you can only take so much off before before you start uh like really getting into it and uh can't take any more off so sure well yeah i mean they, obviously you can only strip this thing down so much yeah you, know, you, you, can't... you can only get so much i mean the frame yeah. alone probably weighs like 300 pounds <laughs> okay so benny your your feeling on this do you kind of share that same sentiment of i want to get as light as i can on this 
uh, or is there is there a balance to you of where you'd want to be? Yeah, I think uh, I think weight is a huge uh, benefit to, to get off the bike, but at the end of the day, it's nothing like anything else. You take all the weight off the machine. You know, are you putting a, a a piece of product or an aftermarket product from Alloy Art or something like that? Which that's what we're running their swing arm. Um, yeah, we can take a lot more weight off. The swing arm's going to flex. You're going to have all kinds of different things going on that you probably don't want to happen. You so yeah, there's a balance of we want to be you know F1 weight, but at the end of the day, you got to have a nice beefy you know billet swing arm. You got to have the big clamps that are super heavy duty. You know heavy duty forks that aren't going to flex and things like that. So the balance is weight is great but you also need to be buying these aftermarket parts from your local dealership that are going to be beefy enough where we can also go you know 150 miles an hour so there's a balance of weight and then all the power that we're putting to them you have to remember the power um in some cases and i might be exaggerating a little bit but if you take a, a stock street bike on the street uh, again, that I take to work is probably 60 horse. And I know my race bike is going to be, I know all of 150 horse. So again, you've added more horsepower, thus you need more, you know, stronger parts and things like that. So yeah, weight's good, but you know, there is a delicate balance, uh, when you're going over hundred miles an hour on these things. The, the specific bikes that you're going to be riding, uh, on this, this upcoming event, um, are, are those the actual bikes that you're uh, you're training on, or do you have similar bikes? Like, I guess what I'm asking is, are you going to be when you get on there? Is it going to feel exactly like what you've been training on? The my exact race bike that I'll do track days and do the testing on that'll be the bike that I'm going to go to the racetrack. So, okay, uh, when we do track days or we're going to do some testing if we ever get time to do it, um, we'll go back and forth. But what's even crazier, so I won a couple of races last year in the stock bagger class. A lot of people are thinking, man, this thing is unobtainable. You can't buy that. That bike had been back and forth to Sturgis, I think three times, Rob would know. And yep. we never did anything to the engine. And the next thing you know, I'm three corners into the deal, dragging my knee. And I mean, so it's not like it's not like this stuff is unobtainable. And I think the goal for Bagger Racing League in general is for uh, end consumers and dealers to realize that, hey, listen, there's an open track day and there's an avenue for me to go to my local Harley dealer or aftermarket pop-up shop and I can put this thing on the track in like a week. Wow. Yeah, that's about right. You know, Josh, these people that are out there that want to come and see it, uh, to see it in person, to feel it, to hear the noise as they come rushing by, the way they block a knock a ball through the air is unbelievable. But for the people out there that can't, thank goodness we have a platform like Fight. They can tune in uh, on 14th, May 14th, 1 o'clock. I believe that's mountain time. Is that what it's called? Yeah, out there? I, belie I, I believe it would be mountain time there, but we're uh, it's going to be 3 p.m., I believe is what we said. It will be 3 p.m. Eastern time, uh, right here on fight. Yeah. So, uh, of course just do do the, uh, the math accordingly, <laughs> wherever it is that you're located, but yeah, three o'clock Eastern time is where we'll, we'll have it here on fight. We want everybody to make, uh, make the purchase, get together, have a party, watch it. Uh, you talked about the different classes real quick. I'll get it. Cause I know that Kristen has another, uh, pit reporting and, uh, job she has coming up in a few minutes. We have a class called the Icon Lightweights. It's any Sportster-based engine that's air-cooled. So there's Buells, XR1200s, basic Sportsters in that class. They're all welcome. We move up to the Big Twins class. We have Dynas and FXRs, which to the Harley world, that's like, you know, here and you have Lucky Charms. I mean, it's the best. Then you have Softtails with the new M8. They're really a performance bike. And Indians Chief. When it shows up, it's a force. And that's called our NAMS. Big twin, usually one of our biggest turnouts. We have the Metzler Pro Stock Bagger. These are for dealerships around the country. They drag their drag specialties catalog because, again, the event's called the Drag Specialties Battle of the Baggers presented by Custom Dynamics. Open the book. You put together all these components. You build a bike and you head out, just like Benny said, go to the track, and you have something that works well. Our Bagger GP class is for the pros, again, we have Shane Narbo in our champ. We have Benny Carlson, a recognized legend in the sport already. Then you mix in Corey West. You start to throw in some Ben Bostrom, who are mega names in the sport. And the next thing you know, you have an incredible group of riders 
on the most technologically tricked out bikes we have. Then we have the FS Cup. That's our liquid cooled revolution where Benny's going to hopefully make history by putting a Pan American head to head with the FTR and really having a shootout. And then we have a new class, the Cobra ATU, which is where everybody comes together end of the day and they just have a run with your brung throw down just the way the V twin crowd would expect it. Wow. Uh, you know what, Kristen, I, you mentioned how Kristen does need to go because she is incredibly busy. Um, but I do want to ask you with all of the things that Rob just said there, um, and I'm going to watch this back to make sure that I can digest all of that. Uh, cause there's a lot going on. Um, so what I want to do is I want to get some predictions from you, which I know might be a little uncomfortable seeing as who's on the call with us here. Um, but I want to get a little prediction from you of, of what you're expecting, who's winning. What are you most looking forward to with this upcoming event? Okay. Well, that's a big question for me, but um i'm definitely thinking that benny is going to win a class i'm also thinking that shane is going to win a class that's that's the biggest predictions i have right now i know it's nothing crazy but i can't you know i gotta well, keep it those are my predictions too keep keep it pc while we're on fight tv and they're both gonna go home with a belt i will say that all right i hate I mean, but there's, there's also, honestly it's gonna be great every class has a lot of competition they're guys from all over the country. It's going to be awesome for y'all to watch on TV. If you're anywhere near Utah, you definitely need to be there because I went for the first time last year in Sonoma and it's crazy. It's awesome just being there, hearing the bikes, the whole atmosphere. It's it's something really cool that you need to see. Well, I want to get some predictions before we go here uh, from the from the men themselves who are going to be out there. Shane, let's start with you. What, what's happening on this event? What can, what can people look forward to? Yeah, of course. It's going to be a battle within every class. Um, <clears throat> with the whole trash racing guys, they're working hard back at the shop in Phoenix. And uh, we have some new goodies arriving uh, right before the race. So um, as suspension and a few other things. So uh, we'll be coming out swinging for sure. We'll be uh, hopefully uh, I'm glad Benny's in the bagger GP class now. Uh, so it'll be a good time. Uh, we, we've uh, had some history together on the XR 1200s. So uh, I'm, I'm sure he's going to be no uh, flake to the class. So it's going to be good. And, uh, and Benny, what about you? What, what are you most looking forward to? Any predictions for this? What can we expect? I'm just, I'm excited to, to, to step up into the Bagger GP class. Uh, and I'm also, you know, really pumped to get our Pan Am, our Harley Davidson Pan Am from Suburban Motors, Harley Davidson in that FS Cup. So, uh, you know, if you're looking at a couple of people on the screen, I know two of them are junkyard dogs. We grew up racing together. We've been on the same team before. We've raced XRs together and we have a long lineage of racing V twins um around road courses so uh there's gonna be a battle out there you know we're gonna go head to head it's gonna be a fun time in that uh, bagger gp class and he's gonna do it with a trask turbo and i'm gonna do it with a naturally aspirated drag specialties basically uh motor and suspension kit and uh what you're gonna see is a diverse um you know there's gonna be a diverse bunch of sponsors and, and bikes out there some guys might have uh superchargers some bikes might have uh turbos some guys might be like me which is big cubic inch so at the end of the day um we're gonna see who all these aftermarket companies who's making the best stuff who has the best rider and i'll guarantee you me and shane are gonna be up front we're gonna be on tv and uh i'm looking forward to it and We'll see win, lose, or draw. We're going to go out there. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to put on a good show for people out there in that Salt Lake City area. And um, I can't wait. We'll see. We'll see who, who comes home with a, with a belt. I feel like there are going to be a lot, of, a lot of belts. We hop on here after the, uh, after the race. I feel like there are going to be a bunch of belts able to be seen between the two of you. Uh, Rob, what, uh, what do you want to leave us here with? Tell everybody why do they need to get this on fight? Of course, if you're there, if you're in Utah, go. What do you, what do you, why wouldn't you? You have to go. So if you're, but if you're not there and those of you watching, you know, around the world here, you want to go to fight. You want to make sure that 3 p.m. Eastern time, you are there on May, on May 14th to make sure that you were watching this. But Rob, any last uh, thoughts here on what people can expect? You know, just I want to thank everybody uh, from the BRL organization, you know, Penny and everybody that's working really hard to do this. Robbie, 
is Linda obviously is doing a, a great bit of work. Uh, we've partnered up with Racer Productions, which is the uh, the crew out of Morgantown, West Virginia, that bring more races to the world than just about anybody else. And we're also proud to announce that we have just been a chartered member of the AMA, the American Motorcycle Association. So the AMA has recognized what the BRL has been doing, and we've uh, filed the charter. And uh, moving forward, will be a sanctioned AMA event. So we're excited about how many more people are are really starting to notice what we're doing. We want the folks in that Utah, Vegas, uh, Denver area ride out. If not, tune in and be part of the action. Uh, we're going to do our best to get you a lot of behind the scenes footage, some interviews. Uh, Kristen will be stocking the pit roads out there. We're going to have Brock Glover come on, an AMA Hall of Famer is going to join me in the booth. He'll be bringing all the action to you. So it's going to be an action packed event. We're looking forward to it. The Bassani Stunt Show will be taking place during the day. So Folks, if you have any interest in riding American V-Twin, a Harley Davidson or Indian, this is just for you. Awesome. Well, I can't wait for this. This is exciting. And, of course, the event is Bagger Racing League Battle of the Baggers, Round 1, Utah, and it comes to you live on Fight May 14th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Gentlemen and lady, I'd like to thank you all for joining me here on Fight and Focus. Everybody who's watching, thank you for joining us here on Fight and Focus, and we will see you at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, May 14th, the Battle of the Baggers, Round 1.